touched on it there. You've got the likes of Newcastle, Tottenham and Chelsea, real testing Premier League games. Do you give some of your fringe players of the squad game time tomorrow and, and test the depth of the squad or is it all out for the victory? All out for the victory. And first game is always the most important and um, it's Europe, it's tough. Um, we want to be number one in the group, so we have to win that game. Eric Ten Hag there in his pre-match pre press conference ahead of tomorrow night's game against Omonia. Absolutely not messing about. All out for victory. His words, not mine. You heard it there. And in this video, I'm going to run through my predicted 11. Off the back of that and off the back of the injury news that I'm going to run through in a second now, we're going to take a look at the team that started against Everton and the changes I think that Ten Hag will be making. But he's made it abundantly clear. Man United, because we lost against Real Sociedad in the first game, we took our opportunity to sort of relax in the group away from ourselves. We now have to win every game up until the last game against Sociedad and then win away from home. Who's going to start tomorrow, though? Let's run through some team news that we've got. Uh, Eric Ten Hag said Anthony Martial was not training today. Let's see how he develops uh, through to Sunday. But sounds like Martial is going to be out of the game on Thursday. And so will Harry Maguire and Donny van der Beek and Wan Bissaka. Using the words there that van der Beek and Wan Bissaka are out for the long term. Sod knows what injuries they've got. But, I mean... Depends how long it is, if it goes into the World Cup and then they don't play in the World Cup. There is a chance that neither of them play for Man United again. They could be sold in January. They could be loaned out in January. Don't rule that out. But let's run through the team that started here against Everton. And it was a significant game for Manchester United, of course. It was the first match where we saw... Let me try and get this bad boy up, see if this works. There. It was a game where we saw Casemiro make his first start. Absolutely. Fantastic he was. I mean, I mean, it wasn't a perfect game. I'm not saying it was, it was far from a perfect game. We saw the best and the worst of Casemiro. But I think there will be changes. And what I'm going to do now is run through them. And this back... F I don't know how much of a change is going to make to this back five. But if, if I'm looking at one position where I think a change has to happen, not because he's been playing bad, in fact, the opposite. Because Diogo Delo has been one of the most consistent and reliable players that we've had this season, but I also think he started every single game. And if we're looking at games that might we might be able to rest him and Omonia at home, Sheriff at home that's coming up in the last the next couple of uh, Europa League games, surely there are two opportunities that he can take. Now, interestingly enough, in his pre-match press conference, Eric Ten Hag kind of alluded to the fact that we might be seeing a bit of this. He was asked about his um, depth at fullback. Now, in this fullback position, of course, wan may have played there if he wasn't injured. You could put Mark Gerardo there coming up from the under-21s. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think, I think we might see that. I think we might see Malasia and Shaw playing as the two fullbacks. Now, of course, he could technically, and we've seen it already this season, you could put Lindelof there. But Harry Maguire is currently injured. Rafael Varane's just coming back from injury. I don't really see this as a game where he'll start Varane. He might do. He might. But Varane came on for the last five minutes against Everton. Maybe this is a case where we're going to see Varane get the last 30, 35 minutes again. You don't really normally do centre-back substitutions like that. Normally, you centre-back see it through unless there is an injury. I don't know. It strikes me as the fact that he won't put Varane in for this, but I think he'll stick with Lindelof, who seems to be working. Lindelof, man, I I've said it all along. Victor Lindelof is a good centre-back. His issues at Manchester United have been his, his partners, but he seems to... He's always been a decent centre-back. And I think we're, it seems like it works between Lindelof and, and Martinez. And I reckon we're going to see Madisea coming in for Delo just to give Diogo Delo that rest that I think he needs. At some point, burnout will happen with Diogo Delo. We need to try and avoid that where possible. Now, in midfield, I think there's one definite change that will happen. And I think we'll see McTominay come in for Casemiro. Because, of course, McTominay is banned for the game against Newcastle. Fifth yellow card he got. In the win over Everton, which is like a guarantee, isn't it? McTominay coming on and getting a yellow card. Absolute guarantee of a bit. McTominay will miss that game, so I think he'll start this game here. And I think we'll see Casemiro drop down, back down to the bench. Um, I might be completely wrong in that. But I do think that we might see some midfield changes. And I would actually... My prediction is that we're going to be seeing this as well. I think we might see Casemiro and Eriksen both drop to the bench with Fred and McTominay coming back in. Now that might give you some nightmares about, uh, well, time's gone by, we'll call it, where, where Fred McTominay was just our starting midfield duo. 
They both still have a place to play in the squad this season. McTominay's certainly been performing far better than Fred has, which has surprised me. I thought it was going to be the other way around. I think we'll see that. That's going to be my midfield trio. And uh, one constant we've had this season as well has been Bruno Fernandes. Eh? He's really just been playing every game. I don't think he's been particularly taking the, the, the spotlight or, the, or the, the headlines. But I think Bruno Fernandes has just been ticking along. And I think the games are growing an influence with him. Like, I mean, I say he wasn't taking the line. Like that pass that he gave to Rashford away from home against Omania when we won. Oh, diagonal pass of beauty. Bruno Fernandes is looking far more like the Bruno Fernandes that signed for Manchester United rather than the one that sort of disappeared into the ether last season. So I'm going to I'm going to predict that he's going to keep him in that midfield trio. Now, I don't know whether this will work. Absolutely don't know whether this will work. And look. Given that every time I think that Ericsson's going to get a rest, he plays anyway. So I'm unsure on that one. Maybe Ericsson's going to stay in there. So we've got McTominay, Ericsson and Bruno. Maybe it's going to be Fred. I'm going to, I'm going to go for Fred, but I might be wrong on that one. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But I'm going for that as a back. Look, De Gea, I don't know what Martin Dubravka was bought for, but it seems like De Gea is playing every game. I actually think his best performance so far this season came against Everton. But I think De Gea will keep his spot in that team. I don't see why he wouldn't. But you can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Maybe we'll see Dubravka get his debut. Up front, I think there will be changes. Now, one change we know that's going to happen, because Eric Ten Hag has spoken about it there, Anthony Martial, he didn't train. So Martial will drop to the bench. And I think the change there is quite obvious. It's the exact same change that we saw against Everton, and it's the change that, that should be made. Cristiano Ronaldo, I probably would hesitate to say that was his best performance of the season so far, that game against Everton wasn't just the fact that he scored a goal. He looked fitter, man. As I said, and I, I've reiterated all season long against people who think I've got some mad agenda against Ronaldo. He's not been fit. He's not been fit. He didn't have a preseason. And in a, in a style of football that requires massive intensity like Eric Ten Hag, you just can't do that and expect to be at the level that you need to be. But Ronaldo, best performance, I think, overall against Everton. Cracking goal that he scored against Everton. Really composed. Nice finish with his left foot. I think he comes in against Omanir, and I hope this is a game that he can take by the scruff of the neck, banging a hand trick in front of the fans at Old Trafford. Why not? It helps United this season if Ronaldo is on fire until he leaves, because I don't think he'll be here next year. But Ronaldo's not been very good so far this season. There's a few players you can put into that category. He's not been fit. And that's the most important thing. For me, I hope that game against Everton was like the end of his preseason and the start of his season. With that goal, and let's see what he can do here against Omanir. And I think there will be one more change as well. I think we'll see this. Because I tell you what, of all the players who really need to find a bit of form, I'd probably put Jaden Sancho as the most significant. I've done a video on him earlier this week. It's a little bit, I find it odd. I find it really quite odd what's going on with Jaden Sancho. I didn't expect it after the preseason he had. He's had moments like Leicester and Liverpool, Liverpool especially, that composed goal, but he's sort of faded into the background a bit. At the same time as Rashford and Anthony have come back into form, Sancho's form has stayed the same. And that City performance in particular uh, was a game where we saw the fact that he didn't track back. So that would be my predicted starting eleven there. Changes I'm making, bringing Ronaldo in for Martial, Sancho in on the left for Rashford, but I imagine we'll see Rashford for the end of the game because Rashford and Anthony. And I'm keeping Anthony there, man. Anthony's just quietly, slowly, just getting better and better and better. And I think start him here. Keep giving him these. Uh, he, he'll be fit enough to start this game. I've got no questions there. Midfield, I'm making two changes. I'm going to keep Bruno in there. And I think we'll see McTominay and Fred. McTominay's not playing against Newcastle. So I imagine he'll play here against uh, Omanir. That's just my gut instinct. Fred, that could be Fred or Ericsson. I'm not really sure on that one. And in terms of the change at the back five, I've gone for Matasia at right back. Simply because Eric Ten Hag, as he was asked about the right back position, he said, oh, well, Lindelof can play there. Matasia can play there. But if Delo's going to get a rest, I don't think it'll be for Gerardo. And wan is injured. As, uh, again, as Eric Ten Hag said there, wan is injured and he's out for the long term, like Donny van der Beek. I don't think we'll be seeing any of those two either anytime soon. And I think Malasia will come in at right back because we need Lint. If, if Varane was completely fit, maybe, like, maybe, maybe we'll all see that. Maybe we'll see Varane start and Lindelof at right back. Let me know who you would put in your predicted start 11, but that's in mine. I've got 11 out of 11 for the Everton game. Yes, please. That rarely happens. But it goes to show that Ten Hag sort of... You can predict what Ten Hag's going to try and do. And I don't mean that in a horrible way. He knows his team. He knows what works. But there will be changes. It won't be as wholesale 
as Real Sociedad because that ended up with us losing the game and putting us in a tricky position in this group the whole way through. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Who you would start? Who who do you think I've got wrong in that? And make sure you subscribe if you're new. But I hope we can continue it. Win away at Omanir. Win away at Everton. Let's go. Let's win at home against Omanir. And then win at home against Newcastle. Come on. Big up United. Make sure you subscribe if you're new.